Hey y'all, welcome to the Ginger Walkabout. I'm the Ginger. That's Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. And that is Lucille. She is a 2020 Winnebago Travato 59 GL that we have been living in full time since August of 2019. This is my day in the life series where I give you the real scoop about what it's like to live full time on the road. All right y'all. So today, today started out a little stressful, not gonna lie. You know, I'd been out in the wildernesses for four days. No cell service, no nothing, no work. And then I hit town and uh, I'm trying to do a no reservations thing. Just cause I'm trying to, you know, stay where I wanna stay and then move when I wanna move. And I'm a planner, so it's hard for me, but I'm trying. So, uh, I got in here to, to Fresno, California, after being in the wildernesses. And uh, this little RV park worked out great. Um, and I was going to stay one night. And then, the thing is, my, my carpal tunnels are killing me. And the steroid injections I had a few months ago, back in January when I was in Texas, have worn off. So I'm getting woken up in the middle of the night, can't feel my fingers, my hands are burning. It's just a mess. Uh, I was supposed to head back to Texas this summer to get the surgery. But of course now I'm delayed, you know, 10 weeks by the coronavirus. So basically I'm trying to find a place that will do some steroid injections to get me through another, you know, five or six months. And Fresno is probably the biggest place to do that. So, called a bunch of doctors. Nobody could get me in. There is an orthopedic, uh, you know, urgent care place that I'm going to go to tomorrow. So, I just ended up uh, staying at this little RV park for another night. And once I did that, once I decided to stay another night, lock it down, all my stress just whew, went away. Because I wasn't trying to get out of my spot. I had a place to sit and work. Internet's fine. And so that's a good lesson. Sometimes that's just what you need to do. Just if you're stressed out about trying to move, then don't. Just stay where you are. So last night was rough. I didn't, I didn't sleep much. And at one point I really was resigned to just being done with this whole RV situation. It's just, it's a lot of work y'all. It really is. And it's, it's decision fatigue every freaking day and it's planning and it's figuring out where you're going to go and reservations and cost and, and then the carpal tunnel thing just has put me over the edge not being able to get the kind of medical care I need because I'm not I'm not close to home or you got to wait weeks to get in or whatever so that was last night so I slept on it and then I got up this morning and I was like, damn it, I am not going to be defeated. So I did go to the orthopedic urgent care center here in Fresno. Saw a doctor who did absolutely not a fucking thing for me. He's like, well, I can't do anything for you until you do a nerve study to confirm that you have carpal tunnel. I'm like, no one else has done this. I've had two different doctors in two different states diagnose me with carpal tunnel and do the steroid injections, and it's all worked out fine. But not this jackass. Nope. So that was a waste of what I'm sure was probably $300 to go see a doctor who's like, I can't help you go get some wrist braces, which I already have, and I already sleep in, and it's not working. But I'm not going to be defeated. I'm just going to suck it up and take copious amounts of over-the-counter pharmaceuticals, which I don't like to do. That's what I'm going to do because the healthcare profession won't help me, even though I have insurance, even though I have all the things, but they won't help. So screw it. I'm just going to plow forward. All right. So, uh, the other thing is, uh, I came out of the doctor, of course, frustrated. And I got in the van and I was like, all right, 
time to head out. I was heading north, get out of this heat. Got a couple harvest host locations lined up. And I just happened to check. I've been checking every single freaking day. And I just happened to check because this was the last possible chance it was do or die for Yosemite. And they are opening Yosemite this week on Thursday. I just made it. I j if it was any later, if it was like the following week, I would have had to have skipped it. So I am going to Yosemite. So they're doing this, uh, like, you know, you gotta, you gotta buy a pass to get in. Um, and, and I already have my America the Beautiful pass. So it only costs $2 for the pass to get in. That's just so they can limit the number of people coming in. Um, and so I got my pass and it's good for seven days. Um, you do have to show up on the first day. So I got that all planned. Um, and the campgrounds are all still closed. Uh, unless I think unless you had, there's a couple of them open if you had an existing reservation. Um, but they're not taking new reservations and most of them are closed. Uh, so I'm just, I'm going to stay at a hotel for three nights. Uh, cause there's no RV parks, uh, in, in, in the vicinity. There's just not. There's like no good RV places. It's either you're either in the park or you're way far away. Uh, so I'm going to Yosemite. I'm hoping that the crowds will be low since they're just now opening. Uh, we'll see. I'm looking forward to it. Screw this whole carpal tunnel thing. I've been in pain before. I'll do it again. All right. So I went to Yosemite, y'all. Spectacular. Amazing. I get it. I get why it's a thing. I get why everybody's like obsessed with it. Uh, I just went to the valley, uh, Yosemite Valley. I couldn't even get further than like anywhere else other than that because all the campgrounds are closed. Uh, and so with all the campgrounds closed, I had to stay in a hotel. So I didn't really, like I said, I didn't get up to any other parts of Yosemite and there are many parts of Yosemite that I would uh, like to have seen. Uh, but I did get to see the valley and that's, I guess, the part. So, um, tips. So with campgrounds, the campgrounds aren't closed. They're just not taking any new reservations. They're only uh, the existing reservations that didn't get canceled during the virus lockdown. Um, so if you don't have a reservation, you can't get in. Like the first come first serve, none of those are open and the reserve campgrounds, if you didn't get a reservation, you know, last year, then you're not, you're not staying in the park. So I stayed at the little Yosemite Lodge in, uh, El Porto or La Porta or right down the road. It took me, you know, 20 minutes to get into the park. Um, I showed up on the first day that the park was back open. You got to get a reservation online. It's super easy. If you already have a national park pass, it costs you $2 and that gets you in, in your vehicle for seven days. So, you know, I stayed at the hotel, left the whiskey dog in the hotel when I went hiking. So we got there Thursday, the first day where they were open, we got there and this is a good tip. It was like early evening. Uh, it's probably like 4 or 5 p.m. that we got there. And we went up to Tunnel View. Now, Tunnel View is the iconic viewpoint where you take your picture of all of Yosemite Valley with the waterfall and all that. And that's a good time to be up there because the park has emptied out. In my case, hadn't filled up because it was the first day and it was a Thursday. So, uh, got my picture, did not have to fight traffic and other humans. Uh, and that was awesome. And then we just kind of drove around and got the lay of the park, which is key, right? Like it, the valley isn't that big, um, but you're going to want to scout out, especially if you're in a rig, like where to park because you can't just park anywhere um, and, and kind of figure out where you want to go. And also there's a few dog friendly trails in Yosemite. Check out their website, figure it out. Um, one of which is the Lower Yosemite Falls. So Whiskey and I, uh, we parked and we walked through Yosemite Village, which everything was closed because it was after five, but I saw where the stuff was. Visitor centers closed, but they had like a little kiosk outside where they were telling you information. 
Anyway, and then we went up to the lower Yosemite Falls, which is, is beautiful, lovely. Um, but literally, I, because it was the first day the park has been open in, what, two and a half months? Um, yeah, the bears didn't get the memo yet that the humans were back. So I saw a bear for the first time seeing an actual bear in the wild. Been looking for one for a while. And the bear was, it was right at the trailhead, right by the main road and the trailhead. And this is the trail, y'all. It's paved all the way up. This is families with babies and strollers and whatnot. And there's just a bear hanging out. So that was cool. Uh, anyway, the falls were great. And then we went down to the hotel. And then the next two days, I left Whiskey Dog in the hotel while I went hiking. The first day, um, I did the hike up to Mirror Lake. And there's actually a trail that goes beyond the lake and up the river and over a footbridge and back down. It's about five miles. Um, not my favorite. It's apparently a very popular trail. And I don't know if earlier in the season the, there would have been a lake. But there was no mirror lake. And and I read, I mean, it's legit. They used to dredge it. Um, and and then they were like, this isn't really good for nature. So we're going to stop dredging. Uh, and so now there's just not much of a lake. And the whole point is you're supposed to like have the lake be a mirror with half dough, with, uh, yeah, the, the dome reflected in it and all that. And yeah, there's not really a lake there. And the mosquitoes, y'all. Seriously, mosquitoes are... They are fierce. I, I was starting to put on bug spray like five times on this trail. So, eh, it just wasn't my favorite. But, I mean, you're still in Yosemite. Don't get me wrong. It's still lovely. Um, and then the next day, I got a... And, I like, here's the thing. You need to be in the park by 8 a.m. If you're driving in and you want to have a place to park, you need to be in the park by 8 a.m. So, I was getting up at, like, 6.30, 7.00 getting, you know, the whiskey dog all walked and good to go and uh, whatever. And then driving up the canyon to get into the park. So I was hitting the park by 8 a.m. both days. Uh, and that was great. And uh, the first day, easy to find parking. And then I just rode my bike. Just ride your bike in the valley. That's what everybody does. It's super easy. Park wherever. It's, it's pretty flat. And then you just ride your bike everywhere. Um, on the, on the trails or the roads, you can't, or on the bike path or the roads, you can't take it on the trails, just the bike paths or the roads. And they got maps. You'll figure it out. Anyway, so, uh, rode my bike, uh, the first day, uh, Mirror Lake Trail. Then the second day I got in and I'm telling you the closest parking lot to the trailhead to go up to the Mist Trail to Vernal Falls. I got like, I made my own parking space, like at the end of a row. And I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna get in trouble for this. I do know that this van is hard to tow. So I felt reasonable that I probably wouldn't get towed. And then like a park security drove by and like waved at me. So I was like, okay, I feel like I'm okay. Like, I was not blocking any cars in or, or anything like that. And then somebody parked behind me and like we were all figuring out cause this parking lot, it was tiny. And when I left, like they weren't even letting anybody else up that direction to try to go to that parking lot. You had to walk in. So then I did uh, the trail up to Vernal Falls, which, yeah, I wasn't going to do it. I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm feeling it. I, I don't know what my problem was. Oh my God, this is the trail. So Bridal Veil Falls is closed right now. So you can't get to that. And then Yosemite Falls is an all right trail. And then, so now you got, you got Vernal and um, Nevada Falls that are like one on top of the other. And the mist trail, which goes up the side of Vernal Falls and you get the mist from the water crashing down next to you. Spectacular. Now, because of the coronavirus, it is one way. You have to go up the stairs and then over, up more steepness over to another peak and then down the Muir Trail down. Um, you can't come down the stairs. But I tell you what, these are wet rock steps and it's really steep. And I don't know why anybody would want to come down the stairs uh, of the mist trail. That seems scary as all get out. And I tell you what, I had my trekking poles and you want trekking poles for this. I was like, old people and trekking poles, I don't care. I love my trekking poles and I especially love them on the Vernal Falls Trail. So I, I did the trail all the way to the top of Vernal Falls and then back around the way you have to go. 
I did not go all the way up to the top of Nevada Falls. Um, I mean, I was already on like a nine mile trek that day. So that was, that was it. But oh, that Vernal Falls, I tell you what, the entire thing is just absolutely spectacular. The path up to the footbridge, which is paved, which is what like the families and stuff do, that that trail was more taxing to me um, than the stairs and the other trail at the top. So I don't. Anyway, it was it was great. I loved it. Um, do the whole thing. Suck it up. Go all the way up the mist trail, up the steps. You'll be fine. I saw people. Trust me, in way worse shape than you. And they were surviving. You'll be fine. Uh, and there's cell service up there. So if you die, like, they can at least call somebody. So anyway, um, that was, yeah, that was pretty much Yosemite. Um, uh, great hiking. I obviously could have stayed and done a lot more. Um, there were people climbing El Capitan, um, Half Dome. You got to have a permit to summit. So that's something I would like, I don't know, one day get real ambitious and try. I didn't get up to... Um, the Arctic Point, Glacier Point, Glacier Point. Anyway, so still tons of stuff, just even in the valley to do. Um, and then obviously beyond in other parts of Yosemite um, to get to. So, but it was a good taste and I'm super glad I did it. Had a great time.